Welcome to our third one of, in this tutorial series of Train Supply Manager Tutorials, TSM. So in this tutorial, we will cover weight conditions and the interface. And yes, you can access and change the weight conditions. So you'll remember, we actually did show you the weight conditions, but when you set this up, you didn't actually see the weight conditions when you initially set up the station list. Um, that's because this requires the um, priority to already exist before you can edit the weight conditions. You just hit E to edit the weight conditions. You can do it from X as well, but X will actually remove all of the stations if you update. And then you'll have to re-enter them, whereas E is intended just to edit things or add additional to your additional to your existing stations. Uh, the minus sign is how you delete a priority, but you can't delete it if you have an existing one. See, you can't delete it when you have an existing one. Let's have a look at the weight conditions. So by default, what you get set up is a OR uh, condition, and it's include um, empty and inactivity five seconds. What this translates into is a train that gets a condition um, like this one. Empty cargo inventory or five seconds of inactivity. Um, they'll get overwritten when it gets its new orders, but there's only one actual active requester, which is this one, so it'll be the same thing. If you don't like inactivity, you can just turn it off. And by the way, when you make an adjustment to the weight conditions, this is instant. That is now effective. You don't have to hit update, it does no harm hitting update, but you don't have to hit update. That has already taken effect. Um, the next thing, you can change from OR to AND. AND would mean that all the conditions you have selected have to be satisfied. It's AND across all of them. You can only do OR across all of the ones you have selected or AND across all of the ones you selected. There, you can't nest it like you can if you go into great detail over a specific train and set something up. You don't really need to. I've, I have had no need to do so. I've had no request for, from anybody to have such a functionality in the weight conditions. So assume you don't need to. If you had an empty train that you wanted to make full, obviously set it to full. Um, inactivity is good if you have like a bot depot, not so good maybe if you have a balanced belt depot or a direct train to machine depot. So you can turn it off here. You can change this number. Um, you can put a wait timer on how long the train sits there. You can set a count. Now this is not item count or fluid count because it's actually both. It knows whether it's item count or fluid count by the resource that you're using is another reason to tie the resource to what you actually are using. Let's go ahead and set a count so that you can see that in action. Uh, we have an OR here. So, I mean, empty and less than a thousand would be the same as empty. So let's just leave it as OR. We don't need to hit update. We're not going to. Um, the other thing you could do is hit this and add additional stations if there were additional supply stations that you wanted to draw from. Remembering that the order that these are listed is a priority order. So if one is available on the top station, it'll take it from there. It's only if it's not available on the top one that it goes to the next one. That's your basic weight conditions. There really isn't any, anything more to it. Um, let's force it to come through so you can see the um, effect of that condition just, you know, for the non-believers out there, if there are any. Uh, let's just reduce this down until it's free enough to force the train in. There you go, it's already come in. And you can see the weight condition is empty cargo inventory or cargo is less than 1k. And the cargo will get to 1k and off it goes. As simple as that. Um, what else can you do up here? Okay, so this is your GUI interface. Now, this one lists supplier train stops. This really just gives you some sort of reassurance that you've set it up or how many of each type of um, supplier station you've got. 
Uh, it's not hugely useful because normally it's fairly obvious if you've set it up right. Um, this one here, trains at supply stops. We don't have any because this has already come through. Uh, but if we did, um, you'd, you'd have it listed here. And this one would show you which train is next to come. I'll tell you what, just to make sure that these start happening, I'm going to update that again. Uh, so next time it will unload a full load. Um, we have 2.3, so maybe by the time it comes through again, it will actually wait and we'll have some values here. To be honest though, the three that you use the most would be the show the requesters, um, define the priorities and show me the unsatisfied requests. Now, you know that you can edit priorities, the, the requesters by coming over here, clicking on it, opening it up, and then E to get out. You can also come over here. Here is a list of your requesters, and this it names the station. Remember, this is called Rodin because we weren't clever enough to give it a sensible name. It's called Rodin. We can edit it directly from here. We don't need to be near here. Let's, let's move away from here. Let's go somewhere completely different. Let's come over here. We can edit this. We could change the, uh, we could change it to hide. What hide does is it will not appear in outstanding requests. When a request gets made and there's no train available, uh, normally they come in here. If we hit hide, it will no longer be available. You can edit these things. You can change it. We only have one, so um, we have to basically make it the same one. Um, you can do all of that through the E. The P function will ping the map at the requester station. So basically this will try and tell you where it is. The way this works at the moment is when you click it, it gives you a mini map in the middle of the screen. Um, and it also highlights, so the very center of this is where it is. You can see where you are, so it must be over here. And it's also added an icon so that when you go into map mode, um, and the way to get rid of the minimap is just to click anywhere else. When you go into map mode, you actually get a requester icon over where that requester was to help you pinpoint on the map. And you can just delete it like any normal one. That's how the ping works. This one up here is a, a um, filter. So if you wanted to see all your copper ore stations, you'd select that and you could see what copper ore stations you have available. We have none. You could make it your iron ore stations. We have one. This is a good way when you get a large list of finding exactly what you need. Um, that's sort of all that you can do with that button. This one here, E is to edit the, the weight conditions or append additional stations when you have them. X deletes the station, all of the stations, and then you can start again with defining them and you have to hit update for that to take effect. And minus will delete the priority, but only if you've already deleted all the occurrences of it. Uh, and also you have a filter on this one. Let's show me all the iron ore priorities. It's looking at the resource ID, there are none. Let's have a look at the iron ore ones, here's one. And you can get rid of it. Um, what, whoops, we can't delete that, we need to do that. Uh, what we want to do now is have a look at, remember how I said at the beginning, this will only show you something when there is something, obviously. Trains at supplier stops. It tells you what the name of the supplier stop is. It also tells you the ID of the train. You can hover over the train, and if you look basically about here, or if you had looked about there, you would have seen a 53, because that is the ID of this train. Um, it actually gives you the train ID and this one will now have nothing because there's nothing left in the uh, station yard, but it tells you which one is going to be next to be called. It would have been 53 as well. And of course, finally, the outstanding requests. Um, the outstanding requests will show you the unhidden requests. You can click this to show you all requests, um, which I will demonstrate by forcing this thing to become active while there is nothing available. There you go. Um, if we call this now, there's nothing, but if we said show all, there is the request that we were after. And you also have a filter that works with show all. And 
it works without show all. There was nothing to show. So that's a way of getting the information that you need. Um, let me show you, let me pause this and we'll go into a different world where I can show you some of the things uh, in addition to the very basics that we have just now. I'll be back in a second. And welcome back. So here we are in my in a, a much uh, larger base. You can see by the sheer amount of time this took that there's a lot more uh, going on in this world. Um, the filtering option is a lot more valuable. Um, you can see how we have some different uh, labeled um, requesters here, some different priorities that go to different places. Um, let's get out of there. What I want to show you is the outstanding request. So this has a slightly annoying problem here in that we have a double scroll bar. I don't really like that, it's kind of annoying. I only like single scroll bars, um, thank you very much. Um, not these double ones. So what we have is the ability to change how deep the scroll goes. Um, if we go into settings, mod settings per player, you can do this per player. Um, this is the outstanding requests. Um, the outstanding requests scroll pane height is currently set to 800. If we make this 700, confirm, back, resume, um, reopen this. Uh, 700 doesn't seem to be enough. Uh, maybe we need to make it smaller than that. Um, settings, mod settings per player, uh, 600. There you go. You can eventually get it to a point where it fits within your screen, and this is by player. So that's much tidier. You have, of course, the um, option to, for example, reduce it to just, um, I was looking at the flying robot frames, so we have this choice here. Tells you how long it's been sitting. You might want to pay attention to that if there's a problem. You might need to increase the supply um, or the options around the supply. Uh, but this ability to change the depth of these screens is applicable to all of them and actually if we go back to the settings mod settings per player you can see that there is actually a uh, normally their heights but you also have a width with the priority one which is this one because you can stack the station names next to each other you may get to a point where it's getting too long and you want to contain the width you can do that here as well so there's a bunch of things that you can do um, to Make the display work better for you. Uh, what else do we have here that's worth showing? Um, you can see all the supplier keys this time. There's only one at most per supplier station as a consequence of the fact that this is the next train to go. And as you can see, that one is also too large. So if we were to go into our settings mod settings per player, the keys, we can see uh, key train scroll is that one. If we made that 600 as well. Back, um, resume, get out of there. Um, there you go, now it, now it fits. Um, much better. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Weight conditions via the E. Um, you can edit your stations remotely. You can ping where your requesters are if you're not sure. Um, and you can edit the station list. You can delete the station list restart and you can delete them if you have removed every occurrence of it. So that's sometimes why you want to ping just to find out where it actually is. Uh, and the unsatisfied requests, you can filter via 
Oops. You can filter via something like that, and you can show all. Uh, fil put the filter back in, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, the things that you have in the requester is probably worth noting. You have a requester priority. So remember, we talked about the supply priority. You also have a requester priority. The lower the number, the higher the priority. Um, this also tells you the name of the train station to which the requester is attached and the priority it's on and whether you've enacted hide and you can change all of these things remotely. Now, if you're concerned about getting rid of it, you just have to hit E again. If you hit E and you hit it on a different one, that will show you the different one and you can hit it again and you'll get rid of it. Or if you leave it open accidentally, you can just hit the big train to get rid of it. You're all done. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, thank you for joining me for this quick tutorial. Looking forward to seeing you in the next. Bye-bye for now.